Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the After Hours Gaming League. We are here with game number four of this best of five series between EA and Stormate. This is the final week in the division playing the, the group play stage of the tournament. And, well, it all could come down to this. Who do we have playing, Rifkin? Well, in the bottom left corner of the map, playing for EA, it is none other than the Blue Protoss. Ciao. His opponent in the top right going to be none other than Stormate's Red Zerg Nasher. And if the Protoss wins this game... He, yeah, <laughs> he better say if, it. Yeah, I mean, if the Protoss yeah, wins this game, I mean, the After Hours Gaming League will be saying ciao to Stormate. Oh, wait, no, no, they'll be going into the ace match. Never mind. But then, that after that, hard. potentially. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But more importantly, a better pun would have been, if he loses this game, EA will be saying ciao. So there you That's go. Out punned with your own pun. How does that feel? That's like getting six pulled. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, now this is a ZVP, and it is on Heart of the Swarm. And the fun thing about Heart of the Swarm is this is not the same boring ZVP that we've all become accustomed to at Wings of Liberty, where there's that 10 minute fluff period where, well, nothing happens. There's a lot more options for aggression. The Protoss player with a Mothership Core can do a lot of damage early on. We've seen some players use just as little as two Zealots, a Stalker, and a Mothership Core to take out every Queen, and with no Queens on the map, there's nothing that can shoot that Mothership Core down. Very, very true. And, well... I'll be interested to see if Chow does go for that. It's as you said, it's become pretty standard to see um, some Protoss players go for Zealot, Stalker, Mothership Core, Harass. Between uh, last game and this game, by the way, because there was a bit of a pause, I went to get lunch and I burned my tongue. <laughs> I'm finding it very difficult to enunciate at the moment. <laughs> oh well, very professional of you, Ripkin. God. Oh, right, well, we do have the Forge fast expand coming out. I think he wanted to go Nexus first, but some nice, yeah. some nice blocking here from Nasher. Yeah, the, the drone is really doing its job well. Um, the Nexus was even almost planted down. He blocked it by just one square. Drone getting in just in time, and he's delaying this Nexus by a long way. Finally gets turned down. And no, he won't be able to get the drone. It has started to regen a little too much health. But okay, pretty standard openings thus far. With the Forge down first, of course, there'll be a cannon up. You can do a little bit more fun stuff with that. I mean, the, the thing is, the Zerg players, I don't feel we're given a lot of options to really change the early game in this particular matchup, but the Protoss, man, they were given so many things they can do. Indeed. Sorry, I had to press my cough button for a second. <laughs> the cough button, I like it. But yeah, I mean, Indeed. like, a Protoss player, he can rush something like DTs if he wants. It's much cheaper to do that. He can do something like we talked together with the Mothership Corps, whereas the Zerg player, it's like, okay, well, I, I can burrow a Tier 1. Yeah! Burrow at Tier 1's actually really good in this matchup. Oh, uh, you he's can actually... Harass with... with. He's going to get in here before oh. the cannon's done. This was a very late cannon. Now, Chow, I can't like for him to just... Yeah, there we go. Yeah. I like this. Nash going for the cannon. It should go Ooh. down. No! Oh! No. move, actually. Bad mistake, Nash. Yeah, yeah, this is a big mistake. Especially if you hold position with those probes, you won't kill anything. Well, that's going to shut down. That's actually really depressing. That's depressing for me as a Zerg, because if you get four Lings into your opponent's base this early on, you can just win. I wouldn't say necessarily you win, but yeah, you do so much economic damage. You keep them busy and harass, and that should not have ended so abruptly, I feel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you cannot shut down the Lings until a Stalker is out, and you can do decisive damage with that. And we think about the timing for this too, right now the cyber core is still not even done, so you're gonna have the build time of the stalker after this, so it's another like minute on top of the cyber core finishing. Zerglings would have been in and just keeping the workers off of mining for quite a long time. Very true, but well, that has been thwarted, so we do have a third base coming down for Nasher, just gonna continue drone production at this point. Pretty even work counts. I mean Nash is a little bit behind, but it'll catch up by three drones in a second when those finish. Boom. We have a robo on the way now for Chow. Did Chow and... a full wall off here? Um, yes, that is a full wall off. So playing is super cautious. I don't know. When you got the cannon up like that, you don't. I don't feel you need to go for that full wall off, but you have know, more power to him if it works. If it keeps Nash out of his base and it's done his job. He, he could well be going for uh, some sort of all in here. I, I would expect him to with walling off the ramp completely. Uh, an Immortal Sentry all-in is something we haven't seen in the After Hours Gaming League. It's not as popular in Heart of the Swarm, but it is still a tactic that is utilizable. And he is already going into Sentry production, so that could be what he's thinking, but he is chronoing the, uh, he's chronoing the Cyber Core, so he's not going to be chronoing it out Immortals or upgrades. Wow, he is 
really going hard with this. He's got another cannon coming down behind this. He does. There is an Overlord floating on into the main, so we will be able to see um, not really anything, but <laughs> three and more gateways this, are on the way. This isn't a bad build out of Chow, but this does say to me that he's very scared. I mean, there's no reason <laughs> to have this much static defense down when your opponent hasn't really shown any aggression, but again, safe than sorry, sometimes pays out. I like this idea. I, I, he is going up to six gateways now, so I feel like he he's probably not 100% competent in keeping in uh, in keeping scouting probes or anything out. Hence the wall off. The second cannon seems a little bit excessive. I will give you that, but he's croning immortals out, and this could well be a bit of a belated immortal all in. Yeah, Sentry immortal all in still very strong, especially if it goes uh -oh. unscouted the way it is. Uh oh, Rifkin. Look at the Overlord's vision. They see everything. It's they like map hacks, man. They see the robo. They know what's coming. Nasher had better prepare for this. Now, what can you do to prepare for this? Well, quite frankly, there's only two good options for this. One is either go Hydras and get them out darn quick, because really there's not a lot that's going to bust through those immortal shields, or you get a bunch of spine crawlers down. But Nasher, right now, Lair just popping. We'll have to see what he chooses to go for. Yeah, this is a very a very late Immortal Sentry all as well. It looks like he wants to be going. I like this decision a lot. Going Mutas in this position is, is very, very nice. Um, this is what I like to do against this sort of play. Spire's a little later, but the Immortal Sentry all-in is also significantly later. Usually you want to be hitting around now with the Immortal Sentry all-in, and he's just started the third Immortal. That's a good so, point. I forget, he's going to have to actually take the time to take his pylon down just to move out of the base. Indeed. That's not going to take long, but as you said, that every, that if he's not careful, that may well supply block him. Well, that, and when you're this late to the fight, so to speak, I mean, every second counts. Very, very true. So, uh, the Spire, as I said before, also late, but it should be done in time to help ward this off. And it's going to come down to how Nasher decides to engage this. If he goes for Mutalisks and goes for a head-on engagement, he'll probably just die. Uh, he really needs to, he really needs to counterattack with this, and he needs to go for the base race. It's the best way to deal with this. Uh, yeah, there are some going lists. Trying to screw around. There's no third base for them to really take out, but they should be able to get in here, run right past those cannons, and go to the main. But no, actually, a pylon being reconstructed, so the full wall is, in fact, up. Yeah, this is going to. Yeah, this is going to hurt. He's already warping in stalkers. He's going to warp in nothing but stalkers now. Uh, he's up to th uh, 11 sentries. This is going to be a ton of force fields. Uh, Overlord spread is really good, but 11 mutas are on the way. Some spines are on the way. 15 mutas are actually on the way now, so. Actually, with 8 gates, be... he's going to have a lot of stalkers, but. A really key fact here is we don't have pylons out on the foreground. He's not really putting them out offensively, but he does have a warp prism. However, it is at home right now, Penguin. Why is a warp prism at home, Rifkin? That's... I, he needs this forward to reinforce, but okay, look at this. We actually have spine crawlers, a huge wall off here for Nasher. If he can catch... I don't know. This is this can be very difficult for him to hold, but he can do it with what he has available to him. Mm, I disagree completely. If he engages this army head-on, he's going to die. Uh, he needs to go for the counterattack. It's the only way he's going to win this game. Especially taking shots like this and not getting anything in return. Not even hitting units for damage. Uh, this is looking bad. He's getting a lot of Mutalisks out. Seven more in production. Mutalisks are good, but... Yeah, they're, they're, the, the reason they're better is movement speed and regen. That's not going to matter in a straight-up fight. And yeah, he's already run, taking down the Spine Crawler wall. Uh, the spines are gone. There's a good number of Stalkers. There's Guardian Shield. There's even enough sentries that they'll lend quite a bit of DPS to this. Yeah, you really and... not just three spies, but more like nine or twelve to be able to deal with this effectively. Yeah, I, I'm... He is well, going, going for the counter -attack counter -attack. now. And look where he's that hatchery. I yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, this is good. This is what he needed to do a long time ago. He has less lings oh, than he needs right now. He needs but... to pick off these pylons and stop any extra units coming on the field. Not going for the gas. I don't I, like the choice to go for the I don't like the way he's executing this at all. He's going for the probes. What he needs to do... The way when you execute this, you need to go straight for the cybernetic score, and then you need to go for the cannons. All these cannons are going to finish up. The cybernetic score is still standing, which means he'll warp in more stalkers. Yeah, and this, at this, this point, the cannons, there's pieces. enough cannons that, to defend the cyber core. This is, this is terrible for Nature. Yeah, this natural is completely impenetrable at this point. He's going to lose so many mutalists trying to do it. No micro coming out of them either. Taking a lot of hits. I think Chow is actually looking really good in his position. I mean, he's yeah, wiped Chow. out the entirety of his base. Sure, there's this third mining base, but I mean, there's no spying crawlers here. He's got a very naked, exposed new main coming up. Yeah, um, Nasher's gonna need to trade in the way that he's gonna need to fly in, take only damage on his mutalisks, and then fly out, killing a building or two. But I mean, with the income, the income is 
in the Protoss' favor, and there's not going to be much income left once this base goes down. Lair's on the way as well. That's also going to be a big investment that's going to die. He does catch a couple of these Stalkers out, but here comes the army moving in. Eh, loses one more Mutalisk. Ling's not really going to help. There's, there's not, not enough, enough of them. Tank. Yeah, you need like four times. Very Zerglings. bad. Yeah, yeah, you need a ton more Zerglings. Guardian Shield's going up. A lot of DPS being dealt. Pulling a couple of the drones. No Micro focus. helping out a little bit. Well, there's no focus fire really coming down to these Mutalisk either. We look at them, they're just peppering random units, so... Nasher looks like he's going to be tapping out here just a second, Penguin. Yeah, down to five Mutalisks. So that is not going to be enough. GG is called. And with that, EA is going to be taking it to the ace match.